Today I'm going to uh, give you a lecture on group theory. Pickle uh, code is MA252. About the course, when you take a digital photo with your phone or transform the image in Photoshop, when you play a video game or watch a movie with digital effects, when you do a web search or make a phone call, you are using a technology that builds upon uh, linear algebra. This linear algebra provides the concept that are crucial to many areas of computer science and engineering, including graphics, image processing, cryptography, etc. Linear algebra in turn built up with the two basic elements, matrix and the vectors. See, broadly, abstract algebra, uh, uh, we can uh, uh, subdivide further algebra into uh, two major portions. One is abstract algebra, which is basically a study of algebraic structure. And the second one is linear algebra, which is the study of specific properties of linear equations, matrices, vector spaces, is known as linear algebra. What is the use of abstract algebra here? With the fusion of pure and applied mathematics with an amazing speed, uh, the uses of abstract algebra have multiplied many points. It has been found that in engineering, many situations satisfy group exams and hence the property of group can be easily applied to them. The major application areas for linear algebra is graphics, image processing, cryptography, machine learning, computer vision, optimization, graph algorithm, quantum computation, computational biology, information retrieval, and web searches. This course will help you to build a strong foundation in mathematics and it also develop an abstract thinking scheme. These are the topics which we cover in today's lecture. The very first is number system, then binary operation, algebraic structure, quasi-group, loop, semi-group, monoid, and finally group. So this is your number system, we just recall our number system. The very first is natural number. Natural numbers are usually accounting numbers starting with 1, 2, 3 and it goes up to plus infinity. The next one is whole number. If you introduce one more element 0 to the set of natural number, it becomes a whole number and it is usually denoted by W. The next is the set of integers. From minus infinity to plus infinity, all absolute values means uh, all the counting numbers, their negatives and zero consist in integers. The next one is rational number Q. See any number which can be expressed in fraction form like m by n form, where n must be a known zero value. Then we come to an irrational number. See, if you subtract rational numbers from the set of real number, we get irrational numbers. Or like you may say, uh, irrational number means one which cannot be expressed in fraction form. For the real numbers, if we merge all the rational and irrational numbers, it consists of a set of real numbers. And finally, complex number. The set of complex numbers is denoted by C and it consists of elements like x plus i or y, where i is an imaginary unit, while x and y are any real number. Now, now we come to the definition of binary operation. Let g be any non empty set and star be any operation defined on G, then star is said to be a binary operation if for every two members A and B belongs to G, it implies A star B again a member of G. For example, we consider a set of real number R with a binary operation addition and if we choose any two members in R like A and B belongs to R, finally a plus B is again a member of R. This shows addition is a binary operation over the set of real numbers. Similarly, subtraction is also a binary operation on set of real numbers because we know that the difference of two real numbers is again another real number. Few more examples of binary operation. Addition is a binary operation over the set of natural number. As we know that the sum of two natural number is again another natural number. While unfortunately, this subtraction is not a binary operation because if we choose two elements in set of natural like a number like 2 and 3 which belongs to a set of natural numbers 
then 2 minus 3, which produces a minus 1, and it does not belong to n. This shows subtraction is not a binary operation on set of natural numbers. Now, algebraic structure, any non-empty set G equipped with one or more, more than one binary operation is called algebraic structure. And it is usually denoted by G comma star, where G is a non-empty set and star is any binary operation defined on G. Here we have some example of this uh, algebraic structure, like R plus dot, where R is, is a non-empty set of real numbers, addition and multiplication, both are binary operation defined on set of real number. So R plus dot is an example of algebraic structure having a two binary operation. So another example of algebraic structure is N plus, where N is the set of natural number and addition is a binary operation over the set of natural number. Z plus, where Z stands for integers and this plus is an ordinary additive operation an additive operation for a set of integers always binary. So, J plus is also an example of algebraic structure. In a similar manner, Z minus is also an algebraic structure because minus operation is also binary on Z. If we choose two integers like 2 and 3 belongs to Z and 2 minus 3, if you put this minus, object, uh, minus operation between two elements, the resulting element is minus 1 and again belongs to Z. This shows Z is an algebraic structure with a binary operation subtraction. In the last Q plus, where Q stands for rational numbers and this addition is a binary operation over Q because sum of two rational numbers is again another rational number. Identity element like G be any non empty set and star be any binary operation defined on G, then E belongs to G is said to be an identity element. If for every A element which belongs to G, we have A star E is equal to A and E star A is also A. For an ordinary operation, we know that 0 is an additive identity because when we add 0 with any other number like A plus 0 or 0 plus A, it remains A only. So 0 is an additive identity. While for ordinary multiplicative operation, 1 is identity element because when we multiply 1 with any other number like 1 dot a or a dot 1, it gives us a. So for additive operation, we have identity element as 0 and for multiplicative operation, we have identity element as 1. Now we come to associative property. Like G be a non empty set and star be any binary operation defined over G, then star is associated in G. For any three arbitrarily chosen element, ABC belongs to G. If A star B star C is equal to A star B star C. Here we have a few examples of for associative property. The first example is N plus, where N stands for set of natural number, while plus stands for additive operation and we know that additive operation is always associated with set of natural number because if you choose three natural number let us for example 2, 3, 5 belongs to n and if we apply this property of associativity over this n 2 plus 3 plus 5 is equal to 2 plus 3 plus 5 first we simplify this left hand side expression which is bracketed only 2 plus 3 which is 5 5, 2, and 5 plus 3 is 8. Finally, 8 plus 2, 10, and 5 plus 5 is 10. So, here we observe that the additive operation always possesses an associative property for the set of natural number. Similarly, we can easily prove for multiplication also. The set of natural number also possesses an associative property for multiplicative operation. And Z plus, where Z stands for integers, and Z dot, which is again a set of integers with multiplicative operation. This also possesses the same associative property. The next, that is quasi group, a non empty set equipped with a single binary operation. See, the, the, there is a slight difference between a quasi group and algebraic structure. In case of algebraic structure, your set may contain more than one binary operation. 
But for a quasi group, we have just one binary operation. So these are the some example of quasi group where n comma plus, z plus, z minus, and r plus. These are the example of constant quasi group because n, z, and r, all three are non-empty set. And addition and subtraction, addition for natural set of natural number is a binary operation. Similarly, addition and subtraction are binary operation for z. And the final one, r plus, where r is the set of real number, and addition is always binary operation over r. So these are the example of quasi group. Next, we have loop. See, loop is again a quasi group with a one additional property of identity element. A quasi group L comma star, where L is any known empty set and the star is a binary operation defined over L, with an identity element E is called a loop. For every A element which belongs to L, we have A star E is equal to A and E star A is also A. For example, Z plus, this is an example of loop because Z plus is an algebraic structure which is a quasi group because it's a, it possesses a single binary operation so it's a quasi group and for additive operation we know that for ordinary addition your identity element is 0 and 0 always, belong, always belongs to Z so Z plus is an example of loop similarly W plus where uh, 0 is an additive identity for additive operation and this W plus which is a set of whole number also example of loop and finally n dot the set of natural number for multiplication as we know that for multiplication identity is 1 and 1 always belongs to set of natural number so n dot is also example of loop but if you consider an n plus then this n plus is not a loop why? because this additive operation have identity element as 0 but 0 does not belong to set of natural number this shows n plus is not an example of loop because it does not possess an identity element. The next is semi group. Again, a quasi group S comma star, where S is a non empty set and star is a binary operation defined over S. If star is associative in S, if A star B star C is equal to A star B star C, for every three arbitrary chosen elements of S. For example, n dot, n plus, z plus, and z dot. These are the four examples of semi group because n and z being a subgroup, being a subset of a set of real number, they also possess associative property for addition and multiplication. So n plus, n dot, z plus, and z dot are example of semi group. Now, one point, a quasi group. N star is called a monoid if it possesses both identity as well as associative property. See, monoid is basically a mixture of loop and the semi loop because in loop we have identity element property but there is no associative property. While in case of semi loop we have associative property but there is no identity element property. So if you mix all the properties of loop and semi loop, they construct a monoid because monoid requires identity element as well as associative property. So any algebraic structure or a quasi group and star is called a monoid if it possesses both an identity element and associative property in M. And finally we come to the simplest algebraic structure which is called group. A known empty set equipped with a binary operation is called a group if it possesses the following four properties. First that is user property for any two members or a pair of member of G we must have A star B belongs to G then G is known as uh, then G, is, G become a close the second property that is G2 associative property for any three member arbitrary chosen from G we have A star B star C equal to A star B star C and the third property that is the existence of identity element for every A element belongs to G, there must exist a single element E in G such that A star E is equal to A or E star A is again A. The fourth property that is G4 which is existence of inverse element. 
for every A element in G, there must exist a particular B element in G such that A star B is equal to E and B star A is equal to E. This shows when we multiply or add two elements and if the resulting element is identity element, then both the elements are inverse of each other. Now, if we introduce one more property to the properties of group, it becomes an abelian group and that is that important property is commutative. So a group G star is said to be an abelian group if it possesses commutative property. For any two elements, A B belongs to G, A star B is equal to B star A. If this property holds, then the group becomes an abelian group and there is an example Z plus. Z plus possesses all the five properties of abelian group. The very first property, which is G1, closure property. The second one is associative property. The third one is existence of identity. The fourth one is existence of inverse element. And finally, commutative property. If any set having a five, these five property is known as abelian group. Next, finite group. A group G star is said to be a finite group if it possesses a finite number of elements. Like, let us consider a G which form a multiplicative group for these three complex numbers 1, omega and omega square. These three elements are basically a cube root of unity. This G form a multiplicative group and because it possesses only three elements, that's why this is finite group. Okay? The next one is the group G having a four element and these are basically a four fourth root of unity. One, minus one, iota and minus iota. This is again a multiplicative group and this is also a finite group because it possesses only four elements. So this is another example of finite group. The next infinite group. A group G star is said to be an infinite group if it possesses an infinite number of elements. Like set of real numbers with binary operation as an addition. Always form a group and this is infinite group because the set of a real number contains infinite number of elements. Similarly, C plus, where C stands for set of complex number. Set of complex number also form a group for additive operation. And this is also an example of infinite group. Q naught, where subscript 0 stands for unknown zero rational numbers. And Q0 dot means here dot is a multiplicative binary operation. So Q naught also form a group. And because it contains an infinite number of elements, is another example of infinite group. This is singleton group. A group consisting of identity element alone is known as singleton group. Like a set G. Suppose instead of star we have additive operation. Addition as a binary operation. Then instead of E we put 0. Because with alone 0 element, this G form a group. And that's why it is known as single group. If your operation is multiplication, then you replace your identity 0 with 1 and you form a multiplicative group with a single element 1. So it is again an example of single group. Okay, now we come to the order of group. Order of group is quite simple. Order of group means the number of elements in that group. And it is denoted by O of G. This, this we read as order of group or order of G. For example, we have group G, which is a multiplicative group with three elements, one omega and omega square. So obviously, order of G is three. In the second case, again we have a four fourth root of unity, which is a, which is a multiplicative group. And in this case, order of G is four because it consists of four elements. And the final example, if Z, the Z stands for set of integers, and Z form an additive group for additive operation, then order of Z will be infinity because the set of integers contains infinite number of elements. Some important properties of group. The very first property is uniqueness of identity. Means the identity in a group is always unique. The second, that is cancellation law. Suppose ABC are arbitrary elements of a group G. Then, for every three element ABC belongs to G, 
we have AB equal to AC then we can easily cancel out the left hand side element A and finally we get B equal to C and this cancellation is known as left cancellation law similarly instead of left side suppose we have element common on right hand side like BA equal to CA this implies B equal to C is a right cancellation law Uniqueness of inverse the inverse of each element in group is always unique Reversal law, the inverse of product of two elements of group is the product of inverse taken in the reverse order. Means here we open AB inverse as B inverse A inverse rather than A inverse B inverse. So AB inverse is always open in absolute algebra like B inverse A inverse. Another property is the inverse of identity is always identity element itself and inverse of A inverse is again A. Now finally we come to order of an element of a group Let E be the identity element in group G and element A belongs to G is said to be of order N if N is the least positive integer such that A is to power N equal to E Let us consider an example G is equal to 1 omega omega square with multiplicative operation as we know that for this group your operation is multiplication so obviously the identity element for this group is 1 and order of identity is always 1 there is no need to compute the order of identity element because this is universal for identity and order of identity element is always 1 further we calculate order of omega in order to find order of this particular omega element which belongs to G we just put various powers on omega least positive power we start with the least positive because it is according to the definition if n is the least positive integer such that a raised to power n is equal to e so if you put omega to the power 1 because 1 is the least positive power and it produces omega further when we put omega to the power 2 it gives us omega square and when we put omega to the power 3 is equal to 1 as omega cube is always 1 so this is the identity of your group G so this shows the 3 is the least positive integer which generates an identity element so order of omega is 3 in this case now we, can, now we find the order of omega square in order to find order of omega square again we start with the least positive power of omega square that is 1 which gives us omega square the next add positive power is 2 which gives us omega 4 and this omega 4 can be written as omega cube into omega and omega cube is always 1 so finally we get omega next positive integral power is 3 and become omega 6 and omega 6 can be written as omega cube into omega cube and finally omega cube into omega cube gives us 1 into 1 into 1 which is your identity element this shows 3 is the least positive power over omega square which produces an identity element so order of omega square is also 3 Now we take another example of uh, order of group of an order of an element of a group. Let us consider a group one minus one iota and minus iota for the multiplicative operation. Again, your operation is multiplication, and for multiplicative operation, we know that identity element is one. So order of one is equal to one, as order of identity element is always one. Now, what about order of minus 1? Again, we start with the least positive power which is 1 to the power minus 1 to the power 1 which gives us minus 1. Next, for the least, the next positive power is 2. So, minus 1 square gives us 1. And 1 being an identity element of our group. So, order of minus 1 is 2. 
for the order of iota. See, in order to find order of iota, we put iota to the power 1, which, is, which gives us iota. For the iota to the power 2 is minus 1, because iota square is always minus 1. For the iota to the power 3, which gives us minus iota. And if you put i to the power 4, it gives us 1. So, this 1 is an identity element. This implies the least positive power of our iota is 4, which produces an identity element of this group. So, order of iota is 4. And similarly, we find order of minus iota also in a similar manner. Minus i to the power 1 gives us minus iota. Minus i to the power 2 is minus 1 because minus square becomes plus 1 and i to the square gives us minus 1. Again, minus i to the power 3 gives us iota. And minus i to the power 4 gives us 1. And which is again identity element of our group. So, order of minus iota is again 4.